Hey everybody, it's Justin from Subvoid Media here with another tutorial. I bet you all thought I was dead, but I am not. I've just been focusing on other things. One of those things being gaming. And I moved recently and I got AT&T's fiber optic package, whatever their thousand, I don't know the exact name of the package, but I got fiber optic internet. And I go to plug in my Xbox hardwired and enjoy those crisp, crisp megabytes per second. Hundreds of them. And I get this. You're seeing a shitty screenshot of my Xbox's networking screen taken with my cell phone. Because my Xbox is now in another room and I don't have a long enough cord for my capture card. So, I did some research and I figured out the best way to fix... Pretty much any connectivity issue with Xbox Live, whether it be your NAT or just general connection, is by forwarding your ports. And I thought, well, I don't know how to do that, so I'm going to look it up. And I did, and now I'm here to show you how to forward your ports to improve your Xbox Live connection. In this video, I'm going to be specifically using the um, AT&T supplied BGW210 motor router combo, but I'm just going to call it a router for the sake of ease. Um, but the general steps that I follow can be used with almost any router or modem to to forward your ports. It's just the user interface might be different and a couple of steps might be different. But it's it's the same it's the same process. So there's two things you're gonna need. You're gonna need to know which ports to forward and your router's IP address. Now, I have the ports you need to forward listed in the description, and obviously I'm going to be, you know, forwarding them in the video, so you can just follow along or check the description if you get behind. But your router's IP address, if you don't already know that, or you don't know how to obtain that, skip to this time in the video, and I will, it's a very short little, little segment of the video where I just show you how to, um how to find your router's IP address. Excuse me, I thought I was gonna burp. All right, so if you don't already have your router or modem's IP address, well, you're gonna need that to log in to forward the ports. So this part of the video really only pertains to people who need to figure out their IP address for their modem. So what I'm gonna do is just show you real quick. It's very short, very simple, but um, what you're gonna wanna do is go down to search Type in CMD, hit enter. Now you got your command prompt, little dialog box open. Go ahead and type in IP config, just like that. And you're gonna see all this stuff pop up. And uh, you're gonna see default gateway right here and a bunch of dots leading over to the right. That number to the right of default gateway is gonna be your um, modem's IP address. And that's what you're gonna use to log in and forward your ports. So once you have that number ready, you'll be ready to actually start watching the tutorial part of this and get those ports forwarded. So with that for further ado, let's go ahead and forward some ports and enjoy some good Xbox Live connection. Uh, one thing that you need to know before I actually start is for this to work the best, you're going to need to have your Xbox turned on and running and connected to the internet while this is happening, or else you'll have an extra step later on, which I will explain when the time comes. So, how we're going to start, we're just going to open up a browser. You know, it could be Edge, it could be Firefox, it could be Chrome like I'm using. And what you're going to want to do is go up here to your URL bar and type in your router's IP address. And this is what we're going to do to log in to our router. You're going to come to a screen like this. And now I'm going to show you down here at the bottom, you're going to see a list of all of the home network devices, all the devices that are plugged in either through Ethernet or on the Wi-Fi for this um, for your home. And you're going to see that all, they all have names. If you named the device or if the device has a default name, you're going to see it listed right here. Um, now, I told you to turn on your Xbox because it will show up in this list. You know, mine's just called Xbox One. And it will show its IP address because later on, when we create the services, you're going to have to 
you know, choose a device in which the service is applied to. And so having your Xbox One on, you'll actually be able to just select it from a drop-down box instead of figuring out your Xbox's IP address and writing that down and doing an extra step that I'm not going to get into. So here we go. We're going to go over here next to device on this dark blue bar. You're going to see firewall. Click that. And you're going to see status, packet filter, NAT and gaming. Oh, NAT and gaming. Now, whenever I clicked it, um, it just opened straight up to the NAT and gaming menu. Now, if this is your first time logging in, it's going to ask for a device access code, which is on the sticker that AT&T put on the side of your modem. It'll say access code. Just type that into the box and hit enter, and you'll be brought to this screen. Now, I've already you know logged in and did this a couple times, so it's not making me log in again. But um, from this screen, you're going to see application hosting entry. We're not going to worry about this just yet. We're not here yet. We need to actually forward the ports. So we're going to go down to this little box that says custom services. Bam. No custom service entries have been defined. That's because we haven't done it yet. Now this part is pretty simple. I know this looks like confusing. What's a global port range? What's a base host port? Don't worry about any of that. I'm going to show you what you need to do. So for service name, you can put just about anything. But as you see in my autofill, I've already done this in the past, and these are just a few of the ports that you're going to need to forward. But I'm going to go ahead and type them out because I'm going to pretend like I'm y'all and I've never done this before, and this is my first time. So to make it simple, I'm just going to make the service name, the name of the port, and the protocol that I use. So port 88 UDP It's the first one we're going to do. For global port range, you're going to do 88 to 88 because it's only that port. And your base host port, can you guess? Well, it's going to be 88. And now protocol. You remember how I just typed UDP right here? Well, we're going to go ahead and change this to just UDP for the protocol. Hit add. So that's one port done. There are seven, I believe, ports that Microsoft recommends that you have forwarded for optimal you know, Xbox Live connectivity. So I'm going to rinse and repeat this for all seven of them. And uh, you can just follow along if you want or if you just want to skip a few seconds ahead. You can do that. But next we're going to do port 3074. And this one's going to be UDP and TCP. Bada bing, bada boom. Just rinse and repeat 3074, 3074. 374. I know I have autofill, but I'm not going to worry about it. I'm going to type it as if I'm y'all doing it for the first time. And now the default protocol is TCP slash UDP, and you'll notice how we had both of those in the title. So we're just going to keep it like that. Now you can name these whatever you want, but I just find it easier for me to name them exactly what they are. So that way, whenever I go, to, whenever we go to the next step and actually assign these services to a device in our home, we'll know what we're assigning. If I just named them all Bleh, then I'm not going to know what the hell I'm doing, right? Bleh one, Bleh two. So we're three out of seven. Now I'm going to do port eighty. And this one's going to be TCP. Oh, it's got an email. That was my phone. Eighty. 80, 80, TCP, at. And as you can see, this process is pretty self-explanatory, but I just like to show every single step, even though I just finished um, telling you that your um, device is going to, your computer is going to make you put in an access code to get to this screen, and I didn't have to do it, and I didn't feel like re-recording because this is um, like I don't know how many attempts this is this is we've had many attempts here but um around the last one port 4500 this one's just gonna be oh, not dup UDP no nope. there we go and look at that we got one two three four, five, six, seven. All seven of the ports that Microsoft recommends that you 
Oh, hold on. I just noticed a little error. I forgot to type UDP on this one. I know it's not a big deal. It's just the name, but I like to have uniformity, consistency. So there we are. Boom. All seven of the global port range has been set. Double check your work because I was kind of like going off on a tangent and kind of telling a little bit of a story while I was doing these just to fill time. So they all look right. All your ports are um, forwarded. So now we're going to go ahead and assign these services to a device. To do that, we're going to go to return to NAT slash gaming. And now we're going to use the hosting entry section. So as you can see, it has all these prefab ones. You know, we're not going to worry about that. We're only going to worry about the asterisk ones, the ones we created. So select it and then choose your device, your Xbox One, from the drop-down list and hit Add. And as you can see, it's going down the list because you can only have one service being used at a time. So really what you're just going to have to do is it's going to keep scrolling through your custom made ones and all you gotta do is keep changing the devices to your Xbox One. Oh, you might also get this warning the change you are attempting to make may cause AT&T U-verse TV to stop working properly I don't use AT&T U-verse for TV so this doesn't bother me if you do use AT&T U-verse TV I don't really know if these actually affect it because I, like I said I don't use it but I'm just going to hit confirm because I don't even use TV, so who cares? I'm worried about getting some good Xbox connection. Just confirm, confirm, confirm. And now you see we've gone through all the asterisk ones. Like I said, each one can only be used once. So we have all of our ports forwarded, and the device that is going to use these forwarded ports, these services, is the Xbox One. So. Once you've done that, you have forwarded your ports on the BGW210. You can restart your router if you want to, but I found that just simply restarting my Xbox, like doing a hard cycle, like holding down the power button until it shuts off, giving it a few seconds to cycle and turning, turning it back on, seemed to do fine. Now, if you do that, if you do the hard cycle and it comes back on and you're still and you go into test network settings and you're still having a strict or moderate NAT, go ahead and try restarting your router and then restart your Xbox again and see if that fixed it. And if you're still having bad connectivity, then it's something apart from the port forwarding. This isn't going to solve it. But I found that more often than not, forwarding these seven ports and restarting your Xbox, hard restarting your Xbox, opens up your NAT and you have amazing connection. So I hope this tutorial helped you guys out. If you have any questions or if you get kind of lost, feel free to leave a comment. I know I don't respond to them too much, especially on the more popular videos, simply because I get so many comments and some of them are just like, didn't work, did work. And, you know, actual real issues kind of get lost in the sea of other comments. So um, go ahead and leave a comment if you need help. Um, if I can't get to it, I'm sure somebody in the comment section will probably be able to help you out. But um, I hope this opens up your Xbox Live connection, and I hope you guys um, actually have a, have a good playing experience on Xbox now that you have an open NAT. So, that being said, if you liked the video, leave a like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you all in the next one at some point. Peace.